I have an update video here on the 4X Ryzen 3900 Monero miner. I've upgraded this miner to Ryzen 3950s which have 16 CPU cores in each one and it's times 4 so I have a total of 64 CPU cores and I get a hash rate around almost 70,000. And here's for my last month the difference. So I've, I've essentially doubled my hash rate but the main thing that raised it was getting the miner more reliable. Sometimes I would periodically not very often every few days check and I would have a miner going down and it would kind of vary you know which one went down but then I'd have to reboot the miner get it going again and here's where I started doing my changeover. Notice I'm much more reliable now and the key to being reliable on these things because I'm running low voltage I'm running 1.1 volts on the CPUs to keep these CPUs cool so what I coded was a watchdog software that monitors each one and it monitors based on the CPU temperature and based on the hash rate and if either one of those go down it'll end up rebooting the machine and it'll also send me a text my downtime now rather than being several days and when I'm going down and periodically checking my downtime is turned into like a maximum of uh, about six minutes because it'll do five minutes of checking uh, if, the, if the miner is not working properly and then do a reboot this video I'm gonna talk about the setup on this also I'm gonna provide full documentation which shows how to set up the miners I have the full parts list and also I provide the software I have a Dropbox link to the software where if you want to use the watchdog you can use that yourself and also show the setup now I mine I use the Tor network uh, for mining because my cable company kept blocking the pools so with Tor they don't know which pool I'm using but I show an older setup uh, for support XMR which is the biggest uh, Monero pool you don't need to run the Tor browser if you're not using the Tor network being it's all one unit it's easy to pull it outside and then I'm using an oilless compressor and it's important that there's no oil or water basically start blowing the dust out So I have a, a 4X multiplex here where it changes the keyboard, the mouse, and then the screen, you know, between each one of the miners. These CPU coolers, they're better than the factory, but the 3950s don't even have a factory CPU cooler. And what's nice on these is that there's six tubes which have alcohol in them, and each end has a heat sink and I typically run around 70 degrees C if you keep your CPUs below 80 they'll last forever memory is kind of a, it's more important on the 3950s uh, it will work fine with the CL18 now I just do a hash rate of about 17,500 if I push the hash rate higher than that I actually get so unreliable I'll start corrupting windows and that gets to be not worth the effort because I could do 18.3 by doing an overclock if I run the CPU at 4 gigahertz but 3.8 gigahertz seems to be more reliable at the 1.1 volts the motherboards are just 470s they're plenty fast I have all the airflow just going straight through to the back and these front fans are actually quite helpful for keeping everything on the board cool I'll show you with the thermal camera what it looks like now the heat is basically just centered around the CPU right there on the thermal camera everything on the motherboard stays nice and cool populating all four channels of the memory makes a difference I'm upgrading my memory to CL16 
but the hash rate difference between 16 and 18 is literally like 300 hash. Hardwired network is always more reliable than Wi-Fi. So I just run a single wire to my router and then a splitter box here with each one getting its own. So power is 459 watts for two boards. So that would be about 230 watts for each board. On the watchdog timer, I also show the watts of the CPU, which is useful. 130 watts is basically what I run each CPU. 136, 135, and that's calculated by open hardware monitor. Now I have a Vega 64 on here, but ignore that. That's just, I could do some virtual reality on one of those, because these are like super high-end gaming rigs, basically. There's some minor wiring changes on the power supplies. Power supply one provides the 12 volts that runs the monitor and the 4X multiplexer. Just grab it off there. That way I didn't need to run the adapter for that. Simplify things. And another thing I did is I put a common ground wire between every power supply. Setup is actually, I have it documented, but setup is pretty simple. I'm basically using stock settings on these boards. And stock was just more reliable than overclocking the memory, which I've played around with. You can you can get an extra thousand hash if you can overclock the memory properly. Well, you end up, you got to overclock the processor too, and it just gets not reliable enough where I liked it. I'll show you on the setup. Press F2. Go into it. So on the setup, basically use Easy Tuning, tuning Wizard and I'm doing the default lowest on all the settings. I don't want to go through and do that now. But everything is like air-cooled, office computing, and then it pre-configures the BIOS for you. And then a minor tweak that I do is you, you go, well actually first you go to boot and you turn off fast boot, disable that, and then on boot configuration I just get rid of the numlock because numlock is annoying on this keyboard. And then on the Extreme Tweaker, you set your memory to the DOCP standard, which is overclock, the factory overclock on the memory. And then you set your core, your CPU frequency to 38, which is 38 times 100. So that's 3800 megahertz set that and you go down here here's the key so you don't smoke your your cpu is on your core voltage you do manual mode 1.1 volts the memory is already is already populated from the docp standard and that's basically it if you want to experiment with overclocking that's all in the timing control you know right there which i spent a week on and deemed it is not worth it. But one thing nice on these boards, if you do want to overclock, you can use this tool to save your settings, which you don't need to use unless you're going to be trying to tweak more. But you can, you can save your settings, and it saves you a whole lot of time when the machine's unstable. You can do a safe boot. There's a button for a safe boot to get your machine back working, but I diverge. 17.5 is, is a decent hash rate. Now on the actual mining software, I have a link to this. I, sh I share it on my Dropbox on the video description. But we have open hardware monitor, which is how the watchdog software gets its information. There's like the CPU voltages and also the CPU wattage. There are some shortcuts you have to have. On these, when the machine reboots, it automatically enters the Windows password, and then it automatically starts running the software, which this is what you would be using. It starts Tor Browser, and it starts the Minor Guard Dog software, which is a, a visual basic script 
it's easy and works well. And then the Visual Basic script, when it sends a text, it'll do the response. And also I have uh, doing a log. So if I want to look at the actual log, I can see every hour what the hash rate was, every time it does a reboot, I can actually see what that miner is doing. VBS Edit is a nice debugging tool. I tried to put the constants up on the top. I would do the same, just copy the same directory. C minor is basically where everything's located. But I tried to put all of your constants here. So if you run different temperature or you want to run a different hash rate, you could do that there. And I even have a high temperature. It's going to send me a text if I'm running too hot, which I expect in the summertime when this room gets more hot. And then uh, real quick on how the software works. So all the main, this runs every minute, and then all the, all the uh, good stuff is happening in this procedure called main loop. This, these two procedures here, check open hardware, it'll look for the process ID. If it's not there, it'll go ahead and run open hardware. Same thing for check XM rig, it looks that it's already running. If it's not running, it starts it. Both of these, XM rig has to have H, it has to have the web server turned on and the config file, which I have all this documented because it's basically going to send a ping to the miner and, uh, and then it's going to read the hash rate out of what it receives back from its, uh, its, its query. And the open hardware, the same thing. It basically sends a ping to the web server, so you got to check run web server and open hardware and then it reads out its data from that. And then just some minor logic on what to do with the CPU temperature. The watchdog's not gonna reboot every minute if the miner never got working. So that's what this got hot variable is. It'll actually wait an hour if the miner's like totally down. Here's the BIOS instructions. The first ones are just to get your board. You wanna update your BIOS on your board. And if you just bought the board, it might not even have the latest BIOS that's compatible with the processor. So there's a, the board can actually update without using the processor at all. And then here's the easy tuning wizard that I was talking about. Whenever you're setting up the board, and if you make any change to the board, you wanna totally redo this setup. So you run your easy tuning wizard, that sets your parameters, and then set those other things, which I have documented right here. If your system's unstable, you could raise your voltage a little bit, but keeping 1.1 makes the system extremely efficient. And then your hash rate, like 127 hash per watt, you get really efficient with this thing. I think this setup is the most efficient Monero mining in the world. I mean, I'm running 900 watts, so I have a lot of power going, but I got a lot of hash rate going too. Now here's the Windows settings. There's a few settings you want to do. Password auto load. You can find the YouTube videos on that. Make sure your power plan's high performance. Monitor never turn off. Computer never sleeps. You want to update automatically, have it automatically restart. Here's the thing, user account control. You do have to turn that to never notify, which does make the system vulnerable but this is just a mining system so I'm not really loading any external software I'm not too worried about it but turning off user account settings allows the guard dog to run in, in admin mode the miner has to run in admin mode admin mode is like 20 percent difference on your hash rate uh, and so it's important that you have the UAC turned off unless you're gonna sit there and always have to click you know yes allow admin mode and large page support and instructions for that and then i don't use any of the amd ryzen master stuff it doesn't even let you go below 1.2 volts or at least it didn't a year ago here's xm rig setup all the antivirus stuff hates mining software because there's a lot of mining bots out there Here's a config file setup. If you're using support XMR or, or non-encrypted mining, you basically have these uh, steps here. You set your pool, set your donate level. It might donate at 5%, I do 1%. 
Well, here's for the guard dog software. You want to set HTTP enabled to true and then set the port because this is the port that the guard dog software is going to ping to get the status of what the mining software is doing. And this is in a config file, which is auto generated when you first run it. And then here's the config settings uh, for Tor network mining. This is their onion address. Just two things you want to put in the startup folder. So your Windows key R, shell startup, and then you want to have the Meyer guard dog shortcut and the Tor browser shortcut if you're using Tor. I hope I explained everything how to get these miners going. It took me about a hundred hours to get to this setup but it's very reliable. It'll automatically repair itself when something hangs, keeping it uptime as much as possible. I look forward to this thing running for many years. I hope you like watching the video. Thanks for watching.